On today's show, tell me if this is real or fake. The Mavs' defense has stabilized. Their shooting is just worse now, and it's unfixable. And the Mavs have to win both the games against the Kings. We'll answer all those and more on today's Lockdown Mavs. I'm Luka Doncic, and this is Lockdown Mavs. Don't believe you shouldn't be here. Loyalty never fades away. And welcome. You are locked on to the Dallas Mavericks. My name is Nick Engstead, media member and NBA channel manager for the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thanks for being part of the show. Making Locked On Mavs your first listen today. But the best way you can help us grow the show is to listen every day on any podcast platform: Apple, Spotify, etc. Leave a five-star review, like the video on YouTube, and comment anything below. Comment real or fake. I'll put a couple of these statements in the comments, and you can respond real or fake to them. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets. Hold on, 200 bucks in bonus bets. They upped it. For any winning $5 bet, that's 200 bucks. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. And joining me, if you've watched the Mavericks game, you see here at the beginning, the middle, and the end, from Valley Sports Southwest, what you got for me, Dana Larson? How great is an NBA season? The journey that we go through is so much fun. We're in the stretch, stretch run here, and the Mavericks are relying on defense. Did you ever <laughs> see that coming, and, Nick? And rebounding. And rebounding and paint uh, presence. How about all of that? Uh, we'll take it. I'll take it finally. Oh, my gosh. We'll get into some statements. I'll read some statements, real or, and we get to decide if they're real or fake. The King, the Mavs have to win both games against the Kings. The Mavs have to finish outside of the play-in. The Mavs need to break their up-down stretch. I'll talk about their up-down stretch. Dante Exum is the most irreplaceable role player on the Mavericks. The shooting is just worse now and it's unfixable. We'll decide if all those are real or fake. But I want to start here, Dana. The Mavs have stabilized their defense. Is that real or fake? They went through a stretch where some of us may have over, oh man, <laughs> some of us may have been over concerned. Some of us may have uh, been very concerned about the Mavs defense when they lost five out of six games. Since then, they are now six and one, with their only loss being a Luka Doncic list loss to the Thunder. And they've got a win against the Nuggets in there, a win against the Warriors without Steph Curry and Draymond Green, and a win against the Miami Heat. Feels like they've gotten, it feels like they've sort of stabilized here, but has their defense stabilized? Do you believe that's real or fake? I think it's very real. Mm. Very real. Yes. And I do recall the panic button being pushed during that stretch. Uh, the one, it, one in five stretch. That's right. That's right. It got everybody on edge. <laughs> uh, you remember mm. Kyrie Irving saying, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Well, they have definitely stabilized the defense. The numbers back it up. Um, they were near or at the bottom of basically every defensive category during that six game stretch when they lost five of them. But since March 7th, so that's the last seven games and they've won six of those, they are very respectable in the numbers. Opponent points a game 10th. You'll take it. That's Opponent fine. field goal percentage 5th. Opponent points wow. in the paint, seventh, points off turnover, seventh, and they're seventh in deflections. There was a real uh, a real difference here in the last seven games. And when, when the players are being asked about it, they're really just crediting things like, B, we needed time. We needed time to get familiar with the personnel. We needed time to get familiar with the scheme to fully buy in to what was going to be required to do the little things. And uh, I think you're seeing the results. Yeah. For this statement, stabilized. I chose that word very carefully. <laughs> stabilized. Because I think this is real. I think they have stabilized the defense. Because it was. They were taken on water. I mean, they were in the middle of a canoe with a hole in the middle of it. And it was just sinking as they were in it. And they were going to see the bottom of the creek or the lake or whatever. They were gonna, White Rock Lake. Whatever it was. <laughs> like They were about to see the bottom of it. And I think they have stabilized it. We've seen some really good defensive performances. The one against Miami, I think, was a very good defensive performance for them. I think the game against Denver, obviously, was mm. an, an amazing defensive performance from them. The Mavs put in all the effort. Uh, and then, you know, you played some teams that didn't necessarily, like, 
you had an okay per- defensive performance against the Pistons. The first half was pretty bad, and then you know it was kind of a blowout after that. Chicago, Golden State didn't really have a lot of guys, and, and San Antonio too. Wemby didn't have a great game, but you know their, their game plan was was pretty good against them. Um, and so like they've stabilized. They're back to like okay, it's we're no longer a tire fire garbage <laughs> anymore, right? And I don't know if we're going to know. Maybe the Kings games will show us a lot about this. They have two games coming up against the Kings, March 26th and March 29th. We'll talk about those a little later. But those are kind of like, and then the OKC game at the end of the season maybe, but those are kind of like their only tests the rest of the season too to know if like they're a good defense. So like, yes, I believe it's stabilized, but like I don't think that they've taken this like big necessarily step forward. And I don't know if we're going to be able to prove that they're, all right, this is a playoff level ready defense. Yes, that's probably true, but at least there is some confidence in what they are doing on that end. Because um, when you were describing them taking on water, it felt like, you know, it could be the Titanic if they let it. Um, That this thing could sink in a hurry if they got that frustrated and if they allowed themselves to feel like we don't, we don't understand the scheme, we don't know where that guy is, we're not trusting each other, right? We've, yeah, we've seen this before. And to their credit, and and it is a different team, and it is different guys on this team, um, with different you know motivations, and and you can tell some of the new guys they've added are uber motivated um, to play on that end, to to rebound the ball, to keep possessions alive, to take on really tough defensive challenges, rather than just like a hey, we don't have it, we don't have the right personnel for this we're we're done we give up if we're not shooting lights out we're not in games well now they're not shooting lights out but they are in games and that is going to that's going to go a long long way and just having like the right mental fortitude to play in these much tougher games that'll come along you know into the playoffs yeah absolutely there's a there's at least proof of concept right right there's there's at least okay we, we may not be able to do this consistently on like the highest level, but we can do it a couple times, right? And right. to win a playoff series or to win a play-in game, you got to do it once or twice. Right. To win a series, you got to do it at least four times. And can they do it four times? It depends on the team, but we've seen it against the Nuggets. And so if they can do it against the Nuggets and the Heat and, you know, against teams before that we've seen, the, you know, the, the first Thunder game, and you know when the trades first happened, we saw that game. That was a pretty good defensive game. Uh, Phoenix on the 22nd of, of February. That was, you know, a decent, that was actually a really good defensive game considering it was against Phoenix. And so you're like, all right, there's at least a proof of concept where Mm -hmm. there are some examples that we can do it. Maybe turn on this on off switch and figure out something there. Uh, So yes, the the defense has stabilized. And I think that's, it's definitely a positive thing. The next statement, the map shooting is just worse now and unfixable because we mentioned before, they have not shot the ball. Well, Uh, they've been, they've, really struggled to shoot the ball since the trades uh, they've taken. I've, I've said on this show, they've just taken some of their shooters from the past and they've turned them into just sh- more shaky shooters. And so now is that, is that unfixable? Is this just who they are now? Or are, is it eventually the tide going to turn and they're going to start hitting some of these shots? Well, I think, I think you could say, I mean, the map shooting is worse. That's real. I mean, it, it yeah. just is. Um, and the numbers bear that out. The eye test bears that out right now. What is fake is that it's unfixable. I don't think Mm. anything is ever unfixable. If there is a will (laughs) and a way to change something, you can. I have a a can of Celsius here, and it is half full, Dana Larson. That's That's right. I would say maybe half empty. You may say that it's half full. (laughs) Um, and so I do think, I think you're right on both of those points. I mean, there's a, there's something to be said about all of it. The, they are taking less threes. They are making less threes. There is, you know, sort of a bad combination of, of certain shooters in slumps at the same time that, you know, is causing issues when you've got PJ Washington jr. Not shooting the ball well at the same time that Tim Hardaway jr. Isn't and Maxi Kleba isn't either so all of that is combining I think there's much more of an emphasis to uh, to get the ball in the paint right now so there are less threes being taken Um, and I think I think that you know and certainly the outlier is is Luca's game the other night throw that out the window he's not going to shoot like that very often it may be the new norm in terms of less threes but you know what? I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, fixable, sure, you'd like to have those guys that you rely on 
to shoot better. I don't know that you need to start asking this team to start relying on the three point shot again, mm. though. There, in fact, if you look back, they shot over 40% from three in just three games since February 25th. Yeah. By the way, they lost those three games. The last three games here in this stretch that they've won, they made 10 threes or less. And mm. they they won those games. So the less reliance on the three-point shot feels really good to me, actually, <laughs> right? It, it feels like something that can't just, you know, disappear on you in the middle of a series when one or two guys, you know, ends up in an ill-timed slump. Um, so to me, there's a lot of explaining that goes into um, that particular statement. And um, I, I, I think it will get better. I think the percentages will come around, but I also hope they don't start taking 43s a game again. <laughs> Dana's like, please release me from this three, <laughs> live by the three, die by the That's three right. prison that I've been stuck in. Uh, Jason Kidd before, not this season, but the season before, I remember very vividly said, this year, we're not going to live and die by the three so much. And last year, they lived and died by every three. At the beginning of this season, they lived and died by every three. The stat I keep bringing up over and over again, before the trades, the Mavs shot under 30% from three seven times. They lost all seven of those games. Since the trades, they've shot under 30% four times. They've gone three and one in those games. Right. And the one game that they lost was against Boston. Like that, that to me is the difference right. between what the team was and what the team is now. It's a new normal. It's a different Mavericks team. They can win games in different ways. And maybe it's on me to stop being so obsessed with the three point numbers. But uh, <laughs> I think that it's, I think that it's unfixable. I think unfixable is true because like it's, you're, it's depending on what you mean by fixed. If you think fixed is going back to taking 43s a game, mm, making it. making that number, then I, I think it's that's not going to happen again. This is a new Mavericks team. And so I will say that, that that statement is real. Coming up, Dante Exum is the most irreplaceable role player for the Mavericks, and the Mavs can't win a playoff series unless P.J. Washington starts hitting threes. We'll kind of touch back on the threes again coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Go to Nissan and see what they have for you. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure might be around the next corner? Are you a glass half full, a tank half full type of person? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to that next level. Check out the 2024 Nissan Rogue, perfect for city drives and great escapes. They have the class exclusive Google built in. It's your always updating assistant on call for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid size crossover for your next adventure. Also, check out the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. Room for up to eight, expansive cargo capacity, advanced available 4x4 capability, 284 horsepower, up to 6,000 pounds of towing. What could you tow with 6,000 pounds? When adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. Take the Nissan Rogue, the Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Again, the URL is NissanUSA.com. Also want to tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has all kinds of odds and lines and things for you to check out this season for the NBA. Uh, March Madness is coming up as well. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament. So if your bracket is busted, you can still get in on the action. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers, $200 in bonus bets. You win a $5 bet, you get $200 then to place... How many more is that? That's how many more bonus. How many more five dollar bets can you do with that? Do the math. Tell me. You're if you're better at math than me, you should be on Fanduel. Visit Fanduel.com/slash locked on. Bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. Fanduel.com/slash locked on. Please gamble responsibly. Shut it down. Oh, Let's go. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Listen, locked on maps. Being part of the show, part of the Raccoon Squad. Listening every day. We appreciate each and every one of you for checking out the show today. Uh, uh, Nick X said, I'm here, and Dana Larson as well, checking out the Dallas Mavericks. And if you want to check out what the Texas Rangers are doing and the rest of baseball, check out the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube as well as Amazon Fire TV. March 20th, 6 Central Time, will be the MLB season preview, so go check that out again March 20th. That's today, if you're Wednesday, if you're listening to this. 6 p.m. on Locked On Sports Today, the Amazon Fire channel as well. All right, Dana, let's answer some more is this real or fake about the Dallas Mavericks the role players 
Some role players have been stepping up. Dante Exum has been one that has really stepped up, and he fills a lot of different holes that the Mavericks have. Real or fake, Dante Exum is the Mavs' most irreplaceable role player. Absolutely real. Totally mm. real. I couldn't agree with that statement more. Um, I think when he was out, you saw how much he was missed um, when others kind of tried to step in and do things that might have been a little outside uh, their lane. Um, and for him to come back, you can see how quickly – um, they they have the perfect fit for him. I mean, he has the skill set, the experience, the slow pulse, right? You know, he's a guy that's out there that's totally comfortable and confident uh, with what he's doing. He's unselfish. He's a, a pass-first kind of point guard. He's a big point guard. Um, there is so much that he does it, it, to fill that third playmaker role, that third ball handler kind of a role. They really, really need that. He is so trustworthy out there. I think the years uh, that he has played have really, uh, you know, I, I given him, he's been in big games too, even if they weren't necessarily in the NBA, high level, high leverage situations. You can hear it when Kyrie, I think it was after the Spurs game, had so much to, to praise yeah. Dante Exum for. And, and he was talking about how he's like a Swiss army knife for them that you can throw in at any point that he takes a ton of weight off their shoulders and for for Kyrie to recognize that um I I just I think he is that guy that's going to be like a huge difference maker for them yeah he, he's huge his impact is definitely undeniable that the word that I chose very carefully is irreplaceable irreplaceable and, yes and if you start to think through the Mavs role players like all right who's the most important role player you can make a case for a couple different guys but then irreplaceable is is a little different you start looking at, okay, it's, I think it's between P.J. Washington, Maxi Kleba, and Dante Exum. And I'm going to say something that will make Mavs, some Mavs fans, some of you listening, very upset. I think this statement is fake. And I think Maxi Kleba is the most irreplaceable role player. Because I think that you can't go to that small ball-looking lineup that they did last night without, trying, without, go, without Maxi. You, I don't know if you can go P.J. Washington at the five. They've never tried it. We haven't seen it. And it's probably PJ is probably the most irreplaceable one because he's he's come in and I think he's changed the defense more than than anybody. But I think they just don't have an answer where if Dante Exum's out, I think you just it's more on Luca, it's more on Kyrie. Maybe you can bring in you know with Josh Green out that actually it makes Dante Exum more irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. But maybe Jaden Hardy comes in and does a little more. It's probably more on Tim to try and add a little bit to the offense. But I think like Maxi and PJ may be more irreplaceable than Dante because. You just, you, they literally don't have anybody to replace what they can do. Well, and I, I think that you can ar make an argument, I think, for all of all three of those guys. And all three of them were out at or or weren't part of the team, right? You didn't yeah. have PJ. Maxi missed a ton of time. Exum missed a ton of time. That was when you could sense the Mavericks, you know, we're having to do a lot of different things to stay afloat. And really the the, the next man up was not necessarily the next guy that really fit into that role appropriately. Well, they make this trade for now. Someone you're arguing could be irreplaceable. Maxi comes back um, and it, you know, adds so much depth and, and allows them to do some things matchup wise that they couldn't do at all before. And, and then the Dante Exum side of things too. So I think it just goes to show the importance of those three and, and, and keeping those three healthy and, and the versatility that they now have because they have yeah. those three guys is really important. Yeah. They just, it's very hard to replace any of those three. Really <laughs> you try to like boil it down, especially with Josh green being out. Cause Josh green, I thought was going to be what Exum is doing right now. Uh, you know, the guy that can play, make a little bit, can defend on the wing, be a point of attack and, and all that. And, uh, and he's, he's He's out now. He hasn't been that necessarily this season, and he's out now. So that makes Dante Exum even more like irreplaceable. It's just it's very hard to to. And so I, that's why I think the Mavs have limited his minutes. They want to keep him fresh. Mm -hmm. They want to keep him healthy, and they kind of need him down the stretch. And they need him to take more threes. He's shooting fifty percent sure. three this season. It's insane. No kidding. He his shot looks so smooth. I mean that that's another thing. I think I'm always ready to say anything positive about Dante Exum because I just love his story yeah. so much. I want this to be the happy ending that, you know, he it kind of feels like he deserves this year. And I was so disappointed for him to get injured and, and miss that amount of time when he was having, I mean, he has completely had a career renaissance. And if it's because 
Part of it is because he's going to have a good shot now. How about that? How about remaking Man. something um, and, and developing something even further to, to you know, further your career in the NBA? To, to be looking at his shot look so smooth and, and so confident and comfortable now it is really exciting. And those three guys, by the way, are the ones Jason Kidd has in the closing minutes in clutch yeah, games. Right. I mean, Maxie's always out there. PJ's out there. Exum's been out there. Um, so for all those same reasons we've been talking about, the, the coaching staff totally agrees and, and you know, believes, I think, too, just to the defensive side, leaning into the maxi PJ defense late in games, um, you know, has been has been something you can tell they're happy with. I haven't really talked about like the salary cap and stuff like that a lot lately because the Mavs have been playing games. Next year, the Mavs have Dante Exum for three point one million dollars, and it's a non guaranteed. It's a non guaranteed in case he has an injury, but still, man, that's a pr- that's a pretty good deal, that's right there. A great <laughs> deal, absolutely. Uh, next one, the Mavs can't win a playoff series unless PJ Washington starts hitting some threes. Real or fake? I say fake. I say mm. fake. What would be real is they can't win a playoff series is if he doesn't play lockdown defense mm. and and grab rebounds, rebound the ball. I think that's what they need him to do. I think there's yes, it would be awesome for him uh, to to bring more offense and to hit those wide open threes because he's getting those great looks. And it was but if you look at him historically, I'm not sure I was expecting him to be uh, an elite three point shooter. Um, you're hopeful that he would, that what, you know, a guy gets better when he's on a better team and you're getting open looks and all of that. And it might still come around. He's had really good stretches, yeah. um, that still give me hope. You know, I mean, he had that, I think it was in early March shot like 38% from three over four games, had 13 threes in those games. I mean, he can, he can get hot and he can have three, four, five threes in a game. So it's still there, but to me, what they really need from him in a playoff series is to just use that seven-two wingspan on on the other team's best score, that strong upper body to to the quick feet to move and make it tough on defense. And he was the leading rebounder in the mm. in the Nuggets game, right? I mean, if you can do those things, that's going to help you win playoff series. Yeah, I'm going to go fake on this one as well, but it's not so much about PJ. It's about what do the Mavs need on offense? And I think they just need one of the role players to start hitting threes. In the Spurs game the other night, it was Exum hit a couple of threes. Mm -hmm. They just need somebody besides Luka and Kyrie to hit some threes. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be PJ, but it has to be one of them. It has to be either PJ, Maxi, Exum, Derek Jones Mm -hmm. Jr., uh, I think those are all the three point shooters. We're running out of th- running out of three point shooters on this Mavs team. Uh, you know, may- oh, Tim, I guess, too, comes in and, and hits some. But like, they just need one of those guys to hit some threes because that's what I think all the offense is going to need with Luca and Kyrie. Just everything in the playoffs just gets squeezed, and so I'm, I'm, right. I'm I am a little worried about. All right, are these guys just going to get completely left alone? Is Exum just going to get left alone for wide open shots? And what are teams going to allow the Mavs to do? Well, and, you know, we wanted for so long to have, like, this consistent third scorer. And I, I'm just not sure it's going to happen. And yeah. so it's if it's going to be three-point shooting by committee, it's going to be third scorer by committee. It might be different guys on different nights. And, and you're right. You know, hopefully there will be enough of them along the way that step up. And they don't have to hit the hit threes well to win games. So this is not like a liver. This is not a liver die problem right. anymore, which is which is great for the Mavericks. Yeah, and if you're only trying to get to 10 threes, 10 makes in a game, so that's night. a whole different ball game. Exactly. Exactly. You got two from this guy, two from this guy, two from that. Before you know it, you're there. Coming up, let's talk about the rest of the schedule coming up. Let's talk about what the Mavs need in the rest of the schedule. Real or fake, the Mavs need to win both Kings games. Talk about that and more coming up. Today's episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. BetterHelp has you covered because everyone has things they need to talk about in life. You hit a point where you're just, you're out of answers or you're out of questions to ask yourself or you can't stop having questions run through your head and run through your head. I went to a therapist and I asked the question. I said, when when do all the questions that I sit late at night staring at the ceiling running through my head, when do they stop? And he goes, 
as soon as you answer all the questions. And sometimes you just need somebody to tell you something that very succinctly and very specifically, and BetterHelp can help you do that. They can help you talk through those anxiety things, those big questions that you have in life. I've been to BetterHelp. I enjoyed the, the process. Therapy can be different for everybody, but most of us have got bigger problems than our favorite sports teams not hitting threes. It's important to get things off your chest every once in a while. If you're thinking about starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. You get to decide when the meetings are, it could be different each week too. I enjoyed that because my schedule changes all the time. Visit betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA to get 10% off your first month. Again, betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NBA. Uh oh, guess what day it is? Guess what day it is, huh? Anybody? Dana. All right, Dana. Real or fake? The Kings games for the Mavericks are both must wins. Fake. Oh. I'm going fake, and here's why. I'm going to lay out what is what is real is you must win both of the Jazz games. Mm. You've got to win the games that you are supposed to win. And the Kings, okay, yes, it would be ideal if you win both of them, <laughs> right? Obviously. I'm not an idiot. It's I get where you are in the standings. <laughs> And I get that you're down. Dana Larson doesn't think the Mavs should win games. <laughs> and you're down 0-2 to them in the season series. So you need to win. It would be great to win both of them. <laughs> you would be tied with them in the season series. Then you'd be ahead of them in the standings. That's the second tiebreaker. I get all of those things. That would be awesome. If we are talking about the Mavericks leapfrogging the Kings into sixth, a much more comfortable spot in the standings by the end of next week. However, if you split, it is not the end of the world. That is the point I want to get across. It is not the end of the world be. Be because <laughs> the Kings have an absolutely brutal finish mm. uh, schedule to finish out the regular season. And uh, I do think as hard as it has been to actually make progress in the standings and move up, even when you're winning like five of six or seven in a row. And it feels like I just can't get out of seventh. I just can't get out of it. The, the time that a team might drop is I think in April and you look at the Kings and they have the Clippers, the Knicks, the Celtics, the Thunder, the Pelicans, the Suns. There are games that they backs. can lose. Yeah. That they can lose there. And if the Mavericks do what they do, if they win both of the games against the Utah Jazz, teams that are are not playing well, 3-11 and 11 in their last 14, right? If you win against sub-500 teams, uh, you have a very good chance of getting there, even if you don't win both against the Kings. Yeah, I don't think they're must-wins either. I wish, that, oh. I, wish that they, I wish that they were. The tiebreaker would be great. The Mavs are down 0-2 yes. to the Kings. They win both of these games. Then they're tied 2-2. Two two. Then it goes down to... I think division record. <laughs> so I'm like, then, then it becomes, okay, can the Mavericks win? They won the game against the Spurs last night. Really good for the Mavericks. Can they win the two games against the Rockets? Those would be really good for their division record as well. But yeah, the Kings schedule is really, really tough. You mentioned all the games they play. They play four sets of back-to-backs in that as well. Brutal. That road trip at New York, at Boston, second night of a back-to-back, -back, like that's schedule loss. I mean, you just, absolutely <laughs> that is a terrible. At Brooklyn and then at Oklahoma City, that's that's a road trip for them. Then they come back and you're like, okay, we get you know a day off, but you come back home and you play New Orleans and Phoenix back to back. Right at home, I mean, that's just brutal to end the season. King schedule. The Mavs just have to take care of business. What is real is they have to take care of business, which is what yeah. you started with and what you said, uh, because man, it's tough. Okay, last last one here. Real or fake, Kyrie Irving's game winner was the most insane thing we've seen this season. Real or fake? And do you mean by the Mavericks? By them, just like the, just Ma the like, Mavericks. So okay. a Mavericks okay. watcher. So you yes. and me, we're only, okay. I've only okay. watched Mavericks games this season. The most insane thing I've seen this season is the Kyrie shot. Because I started to go through the list and it's, it's wild the things we've seen just this year. The okay. Luka shot, the Don Flick shot yes, against 100%. the Nets. The Nets. That was insane. The beginning of the season, like that, was that more impressive than Kyrie shot? I don't know. It's the both arguable. to win a game. Yes, yes. The thirty zero comeback loss against oh, the wow, Thunder. Yeah. That was insane. The Max Struess shot against the Cavs. That was insane. Just an, just an insane yep. thing. Not an insane positive. Insane. Yep. Luca 
scored 73 points in a game this season. Dang, Luca's, when you reel it off like this. <laughs> Luca's 30-point triple-double streak that we've never seen yeah. anybody do. Not Westbrook, not not anybody, not Oscar Robertson. Gafford's 33 straight field goals. Like, all these insane things we've seen. Is Kyrie's shot the most insane thing? Okay, I'm going to have to say, I'm going to have to say fake now that you've given wow. me all of that material. Yeah. Uh, it, you know, recency bias would have wanted me to say that, to argue all of that. Um and, and it's been so fun to to listen to, you know, everyone worldwide describe like yeah. how difficult it what is, right? It? <laughs> and it, what was it? And, you know, for him to be ambidextrous and he works on those kind of things. And we know he's literally, um, you know, one of the most creative, crafty, hardworking, like he hones his skills that are God-given already. Somebody as good as he was, just born that way, could have sat back and been great. Instead, he wanted to take it next level and he works, you know, even harder behind the scenes. And then the whole world, it was on display for everybody to see. And, and so I loved that side of it, but I, I think that, I think I have to argue for, for Lucas 70 point game, like, insane. you know, I mean, how can you, how can you argue against that, that that wasn't the most insane? Well, they let him, they seen? let him score those points. Oh, okay. They just, okay. the, they the, the Hawks him. defense right. just like allowed right. him. They opened the door and he just walked through the middle and of he it. Walked and, right you know, in. Was... He's still got to put the ball in the basket. I, I, I just, it, again, how fun, how I started this podcast was what a journey <laughs> this season is. This is why I love what I do. Because it Never is, know. there are so many things that happen over the course of a season. And man, have Mavs fans been treated to some phenomenal stuff. I know it was an inferior opponent. I still think the Luka game winner against the Nets, where he's pinned against the right. sideline and just like a yeah. hook shot from three. Like Kyrie's was from two, left handed. And banked it in. Banked it in. I mean, that's it. That was just insane. Like yeah. just an insane thing to, and we've seen two shots like that this season. We have. Well, that's what I love. So I'll never forget Luca looking at his right hand <laughs> yeah. after he did that. Kyrie and that little like head. swipe, that little swipe he kept, you know, showing everybody when he did. And then Kyrie looking at his left after the big <laughs> shot he hit after the Nuggets game. I mean, it's uh. amazing. Those two. What a and then the Struce shot, the the second longest game winning That's shot insane. in NBA history. I know that one that one hurts thinking back to it, but still, like it's an insane thing that we witnessed this season. I had put that out of my memory just so that I could try <laughs> to try to get over it. <laughs> insane. We've seen insane things. Last year yes. we saw insane bad things. This year we're we're seeing mostly insane good things for the Mavericks. So let us know in the comment section. I'll put some of these in the comments, real or fake. Let me know on some of these what you think about it. We'll be back tomorrow. I think it'll be me and I don't know, actually, it may, here's the thing. <laughs> Slightly loves softball more than anything. What? He, he plays on okay. Thursdays. He plays on Thursdays and the games always get rained out. And I think it's the funniest it thing. Is, Literally, we've had rain. rain on, we've had yeah. rain on, I know. <laughs> I know it's supposed to rain on Thursday. Aww. We have, and so if it gets rained out, it'll be me and Slightly. If it's not, it'll be me and maybe somebody else, maybe just me. But anyway, we'll have a show That's for you. Crazy. Guys, thanks so much for listening to Locked on Mavs. Yeah. Peace out. Boom.